Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Uh, today I'm doing a review of a iconic pen. Now I did a little uh, uh, overview of this pen recently and suggested that uh, if people wanted me to do a full review of the pen that I would be more than happy to. Uh, but there are so many full reviews out there so I didn't want to jump in straight away and do one. So I just sort of covered it in why I like the pen. Uh, but here I'm going to do a full review of this pen today. This is uh, an iconic pen as I said, a classic of the fountain pen world. Uh, on the market for 50 years, it is the Lamy 2000. Now this pen is not a pen for those who want a flashy statement pen. This is an incredible function over form pen, and that's why we're looking at it today. A classic, tons of reviews of it around. All the big reviewers, main reviewers have, have covered this pen, and for really good reason. You can already tell I'm very positive about this pen. If you've seen the overview, you'll know how positive I am about this pen. But let's check it out, go into more detail, and we'll see you on the other side. Well, here we have the Lamy 2000. Now, as I said, this is not a flashy statement pen. This is not a pen that if you use it, you're gonna to get tons of people uh, paying you compliments about the pen. This is an understated, beautiful pen that writes incredibly well. And that's what we want from these, isn't that right? So, let's just talk about the pen. Let's uh, cover, uh, firstly, this was, pen was designed in 19, or released in 1966 by Lamy, uh, and it was designed by Gert A. Müller, uh, and to sort of emulate the Bauhaus sort of design, uh, sort of ideas. Uh, now, the pen, has basically been left unchanged for 50 years. There've been a couple of sort of like limited edition pens. You can also get a stainless steel one. There was the black amber, I think, to commemorate the 50 year anniversary of the pen. But more or less, this is the pen and this is the way you get it. This is the way you got it and this is the way uh, you get it. It's not an inexpensive pen, uh, but it is certainly not the most expensive pen on the market but it is considered Lamy's sort of flagship pen. And, you know, I think, as I said, an iconic pen uh, in this pen world that we all live in. So let's uh, talk about the pen and what you get. So there is sort of, the pen is made of Macaron, which is basically a black fiberglass polycarbonate. And it's a nice material. It feels really nice under the hands. It's sort of got this brushed texture, which uh, gives the, uh, the the pen a lovely sleek line. It also covers up uh, any manufacturing or seams. You can see there that like you can barely see the piston knob line there. Uh, and it's just really, really very remarkable. So one of the things I love about this pen is how understated the features are finial on the end cap, like you just get this little silver pin or uh, cap lining thing there uh, on the end and the top is just basically polished macaron and it's got this little ring and inbuilt spring loaded clip. It's really a very understated pen but a very beautiful pen. It's a snap cap uh, and a lot of the design is underneath the cap which we'll get to uh, in a second. Um, the, it swells slightly towards the center and then tapers towards the end. Um, so it's a sort of a standard cigar shaped pen, but with a couple of little differences like the flat ends uh, to set it apart. The pen does post and it posts very securely. Um, it's a lovely pen to write with posted. It fits very nicely in the hand. Um, and capping it, it's got these two little, like lovingly referred to as ears here on the side. Now these are where the pen caps onto. Here that little click. Um, they don't get in the way. A lot of people are always concerned about this, about whether they get in the way. They are almost, you can feel they're there, but they're certainly not sharp and they're not intrusive to the writing experience with the pen. The grip is interesting. It's this brushed stainless steel, which is the same as the material of the clip, which is also where you get the only branding uh, on the pen other than, the, um, other than, well, I think the pen itself is the, its own branding, really. Um, but that Lamy written there is the only branding on the pen, which is quite awesome. There's also, I think it says Germany, which I don't know if you won't be able to see that under the clip there. 
Um, the grip section is interesting. It's sort of there's no sort of standard place to sort of hold it, and it does become quite narrow. Um, but it does still fit nicely in the hand because it's got this sleek line. Uh, th this pen was designed to sort of step in the way of the ballpoint revolution of the time. Ballpoint pens were becoming more and more popular because of convenience. So pens like the Parker 51 really started getting the ball rolling on fountain pens following a couple of trends with ballpoints, which was less flashy uh, and more portable and more uh, sturdy in terms of the, um, the, the, the filling mechanism and all those sorts of things. Uh, so this follows that, that trend. Uh, but I think this pen does it very, very nicely. It's a beautiful pen to hold. It doesn't feel, it never feels slippery. Uh, you certainly never feel like there is a lack of place to grip the pen. I hold it back here on the little ears. Uh, it gives me a nice distance between my fingers and the pa uh, end of the nibs on the page. Uh, and so it's a really lovely pen to hold, in my opinion. The grip does get narrow at around 7.9 millimeters, sort of around this mark here. Uh, and if you look at the underside of the nib, uh, you get this little breather hole there, which is where the pen fills. We get more on the filling mechanism in just a second. Um, but it is, that's a breather hole in the fade, and the nib is semi-hooded, as you can see there. And it's actually a nice hooded nib. It, it's uh, rhodium-plated 14 karat gold, so it's a very nice nib. There are some concerns about this nib in terms of a sweet spot, but we'll get into that with the writing experience. Um, but for me, this is a lovely pen to use and a lovely pen to write with. As I said, it's made of Macrolon. Uh, it's a nice sort of medium weight material. It's, um, and as I said, it feels nice in the hand. It's always got a sort of a warm sort of feel uh, to it, which is quite a nice thing to actually to write with. Um, now, let's talk about the filling mechanism. It is a piston filled pen. What does that mean? Well, it's got an inbuilt piston that by turning a knob on the end here, which I won't do because it's filled with ink, you lower a piston up and down in the pen uh, and you are able to fill the pen from an ink bottle. You can't use cartridges, no converter, anything like that. It's the inbuilt piston mechanism. Now, as I said, this material allows you to have amazing tolerances in terms of the um, how the pen, you know, the, the finish in the, on the pen. You can barely see, barely see the line for the piston up there. Now, I've, I've been using this pen for about a year and a half, um, and so a little of the, the, the sheen of the pen, if you will, has sort of been worn off, but it's still, the tolerances are amazing. There's another join here, which once again is not so easy to see. So really, really fabulous. Um, the pen does have an ink window, so you can see sort of how much ink you've got in there. Um, I'm not sure how visible that will be sort of in this video, uh, but it is a functioning ink window uh, and very, very helpful. Okay, so let's talk some stats. The pen, it weighs 25 grams, so not a heavy pen. 10 of that is in the cap and 15 is in the body. So the pen feels very nice unposted as well as posted. Now, it doesn't shift the weight because the weight of the cap there is on the webbing of the hand as opposed to being back behind the hand pulling the pen down. It sits nicely on the hand still. Of course, if you're choking the pen right up at the top, you, it will shift the weight back ever so slightly, but for most people, I think we'll hold the pen around this point. Um, and it is very, very comfortable. It's a very, very well-balanced pen. The size of the pen, uh, while well, I've got it posted, posted is 154 millimeters. Unposted is a 100, 125 millimeters. And capped is 140, which for me seems to be the ideal Lamy size. Now, if you look at the Ion, if you look at uh, the Studio, the Safari All-Star range, these all come in at around this 140 millimeter mark, and it's a good length. Here is a Lamy Safari, and you can see they are basically the exact same size pen, even down to a very similar width of the cap. Just for comparison's sake, other pens uh, that we can have a look at here are the Pilot uh, Metropolitan, which is just ever so slightly shorter, but not far off. And then a couple of slightly bigger pens, and I've got these pens, particularly this one for a reason, the Pilot Custom 823. Now, this is a slightly longer pen, but if you beveled off those, uh, those finials, you would actually end up with a similar sort of size pen. Now, the reason I have these pens here is that these are both exceptional writing pens. Uh, both have unique filling systems, 
both are more than the average um, sort of beginner pen, especially in terms of the cost. Uh, you're looking, well, while we're here, the Lamy costs $160, $170 American at retail price. MSRP is about $210. Um, and this one is a little bit more expensive, the Pilot Custom 823. Um, but I think they're both fabulous everyday writing pens uh, and both great pens uh, that write and, you know, function in in a very, very uh, good way. Another pen just for size comparison, just because I, it got here today and it's been a grail pen of mine for two years and I finally have one, is the Visconti Homo Sapiens. So I just wanted to show that more than anything. Finally have my first grail pen. Um, I've, I've used it a couple of times uh, before uh, and wanted one, so now I have one. Okay, so that's for the size uh, comparisons. Oh, one well, very quick, I'll just do a quick size comparison with the Lamy Safari with uh, the pens unposted and posted, uh, just so you can see. So that is uncapped. Um, the Lamy Safari is a little longer. Um, if you line up the ends, sort of you just get a bit more length of nib as well. Uh, and then if we uh, post the pens, you'll see that the Lamy Safari edges out even slightly further out again. So this pen, I, I do consider the Lamy 2000 to be, you know, a number of ways, very similar to say a Parker 51, that sort of bottle pen posts quite deeply, like it does post relatively deeply within the cap, more than sort of a lot of other pens do, um, but sits very, caps posts very nicely and sits very nicely in the hand at that size. So now we've done the writing, let's do a, uh, now we've done size comparisons, let's do a writing sample. Okay, I'll just move this out of the way and bring in the Rhodia. So I have this inked with Waterman Serenity Blue, my standard um, review ink now for pens. Um, I know how this ink works, a lot of us do, so the way this pen writes, you'll see using that ink. Let's start. This is a 14 karat gold medium nib. So, one thing we can see straight off uh, the bat here is that this pen is wet. Now, Waterman Serenity Blue is not a dry ink, but this pen writes very, very wet. I like it a lot. As I said, just for the sake of the exercise, this pen, this ink is Waterman. Serenity Blue. Or originally known as Florida Blue, and I know one particular reviewer really likes to hold on to that, which I really quite like. I prefer the name Florida Blue myself as well. Oh, while I'm mentioning, the capac incapacity of this pen as a piston filler is actually pretty good. It's 1.35mm, so it's more than a converter. It's not as much as a lot of other piston filler pens, but the body isn't as big as a lot of others either. But 1.3mm is still plenty of, uh, of ink to write with. Okay, let's just write out um, this sentence. Okay, so this pen is a smooth writer. It is. It's got feedback, a lot of limeys do, but it is a smooth pen, and as I said, a wet pen, which I quite like. This is incredibly reliable. Hard starts, things like that, are so, so, so rare with this pen. Skipping even, let's just look at some quick writing. Oh gosh, some of the worst writing I've ever done, but you get the idea. No skips, no hard starts. Um, yeah, it goes and goes and goes. It's a wonderful, wonderful pen. It is wetter on the vertical than on the horizontal, um, but 
just a really lovely well-tuned wet writing pen uh, okay I'm not even gonna try and flex this but it's a little bit sort of soft because it's gold so you can sort of squeeze a little bit of line variation out but I really don't like doing that particularly with this pen I don't think it's a pen designed for that at all um, reverse writing is very possible um, but it's quite scratchy and you actually do feel it sort of digging into the page um, okay, you can hear that uh, so it's obviously not designed for that now a lot of these pens the Lamy 2000s are have a tendency to be a little bit stubby and you can actually see that a little bit here um, you do get a slightly different width line and I quite like that you can't see it so much in the writing but it is there and of course that becomes amplified the wider the nib is now you can get this pen in everything from extra fine fine medium broad double broad uh, oblique medium oblique broad and oblique double broad from one major retailer that's what they can offer so that's a pretty wide range of nibs for a pen like this and you can get um, replacement nibs for it occasionally from certain sellers it's rare so just look after the pen uh, don't drop it it's uh, you know it's a pen you don't want to drop um, let's now just do a bit of right-handed writing so yeah it's really smooth it's a lovely lovely pen to write with it really is two things i will say firstly there is a sweet spot on this nib one way of testing this is to take the pen and i take it from basically you can't quite i don't know how well the angle will show up here where you're at a 90 degree angle to the paper drag it across the paper roll it as you go to the other 90 degree and see where the pen kicks in and drops out So I actually got past 90 there and we got started getting ink again. But this point here, and particularly that bracket in there, that is your sweet spot. So that is from if we roll it from about that angle to about there. That's all you're gonna get. So it's like a very small amount of turning in the hand. So if this is a pen that if you turn your, your pen when you write. You get a bit scratchy sometimes it might cut out but for the most part it's going to write uh, if you're holding the pen in a pretty much sort of standard way at any point the pen uh feels as i said it feels really lovely in the hand it's very well weighted and the, a lot of the weight is aimed towards the uh the nib there with that sort of steel in the end the balance is very very nice let's just see if it writes under its own weight and we have absolutely no problem there whatsoever this pen is beautifully tuned, beautifully wet. So, let's begin a summary of this pen. It is not a cheap pen. It's not a horribly expensive pen. It's a well-priced pen and very well-priced for how it performs. It's an excellent everyday carry pen. It's not flashy, so it won't stand out. It's not the sort of pen that someone's gonna steal from your desk, like an 823 or a Mont Blanc 149 or something like that. This is a pen that is understated, but if you've written with one, if you know them, you know this is a very good pen. Okay, let's talk pros and cons. I think I've covered value. I think it's well worth the cost that you pay for this pen. And if in Australia, it, in Australia it is more expensive. This pen costs more in Australia than the conversion from the American price. So shop around. If you need to buy from overseas, if you're in Australia, do so. But even if you're overseas, shop around because there are places that often have really good deals in this pen and they do pop up secondhand occasionally uh, from respected sellers. So keep an eye out for those as well, just while we're there. Okay, let's talk good and bad, pros and cons. Let's start with the pros. This nib is smooth. When you're writing that sweet spot, it is absolutely glorious. It's wet and it's perfect. The weight of the pen, is amazing it is you know the pen is there it's not overly heavy you can write with this pen for hours without cramping or anything it is just very very nice uh, 
And the size in the hand is good. It's got a nice sort of, a nice enough width that you know that you're holding a pen that is, you know, sort of substantial. This pen is wet. For me, that is a big selling point. I love wet pens. This is just glorious. Um, so for me, that is an absolute pro. Function over form is another pro. My philosophy on pens is not to have flashy pens, is not to have these bright celluloids and that sort of stuff. That's not me. If I like a pen like that, then great. But for me, the way a pen works, the way it writes, that is absolutely paramount and fundamental to my enjoyment of a pen. And this pen does not let you down. This is a fabulous pen. Now for cons, there's a couple. So firstly, the cost in Australia, like, it's, I saw it somewhere for $370, uh, which is a huge amount more than the uh, MSRP even in America. So, like, we're talking a, a big markup to get the pen out to Australia. And I believe these pens are even cheaper if you get them in Germany, which is brilliant. Look them up. Find somewhere that sells it at a price that you want to pay. Um, there is a sweet spot on the nib. As a left-handed writer, I was concerned that was going to be a problem. I'm glad it's not, but there is a sweet spot. So if you do turn your nib, look at maybe getting an oblique uh, nib if that is something that you uh, are prone to doing. The other minor con, and this is really nitpicking because I love this pen and I love just about everything about it, is the grip. It is a little narrow if you get down towards the end. Um, so if you hold it further back, it's very, very well placed in the hand. Down further, it just starts to get a little bit sort of tight. But that's about it. This is a wonderful pen. It is a pen I love. Uh, it is a pen that I enjoy writing with. It's inked almost all the time. Having Actually having this ink in it has been a real sort of, um, it's made me want to get this review done really quickly because I want to get back to having some of my real favorite inks in it. This is such a reliable ink. Um, but you know, when I've had things like Lamy Dark Lilac in this pen, it is just a dream. Um, another ink that actually I really loved in this pen was Aurora Black. Now that is a great black ink and in a pen like this, mm-hmm, very nice. This pen was I think in my top five pens that I got last year. Um, this pen will this pen will probably be in my top five full stop for this year. I will be doing a top five pens of this year video, but I'm also gonna do a top five pens overall uh, video as well this year. Um, so I thought I might just, I, I'm pretty sure, I'd be very surprised if this pen doesn't make it into that list somewhere quite near the top. It is a great pen. If you don't like it, absolutely. Not everyone is going to like everything, but for me, this is the real deal. Hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Uh, please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. Uh, I am on Instagram and Twitter uh, where I am at the underscore off stage underscore me and I smudged that because I was riding around a tripod but you get the idea it's also written earlier in the video and linked down below um, get in touch let me know what you're up to if there's a way you'd like to support this channel please let me know I'm always open uh, to reviewing items I'm not aware of and that I don't know or that I don't have so please get in touch in the meantime enjoy your pens enjoy writing and I'll talk to you later